After we've made our incisions, we begin the capsular rexus. The ideal capsular rexus is about 5 millimeters in diameter. This will cover the edges of the intraocular lens and help prevent capsular opacification. If you make the capsular rexus smaller than this, it's really hard for you to get to the nucleus uh, to mobilize the quadrants during phaco emulsification with divide and conquer. And if you make it much wider, uh, you begin to have more difficulty controlling the um, capsular rexus, and it's easier to lose the rexus and create a posterior tear. Next, we perform hydrodissection. And uh, with hydrodissection, we really create this cortical cleavage that allows you to move the nucleus. You place fluid that lifts the nucleus slightly, then you tap this down. And this um, frees the nucleus so that during the case, you can place very little stress on the zonules. Now, this is an important thing to do, particularly beginning. Uh, I'd like for you to place a little viscoelastic in the anterior chamber, and then using your chopper, check to be sure that the nucleus is spinning freely. Taking that extra moment to do that ensures that you're, you will not be placing a lot of stress on the zonules. If the lens doesn't move freely, then go ahead and um, continue your hydro dissection. Then using moderate flow, low power, and low vacuum, begin sculpting the grooves. Low vacuum will allow you to create the grooves without engaging or grabbing the nucleus. You start the groove at the proximal margin of the capsular rexus and carry the groove across the distal margin. Use the phaco power only as you sculpt forward. This will reduce the phaco time and help to limit the phaco energy released in the anterior chamber. Carry this groove posteriorly until you see a good fundus reflex. As a rule, the uh, depth of the groove should be about three times the width of the phaco tip. You then rotate the nucleus 90 degrees and repeat the same groove starting proximally at the edge of the capsular rexus and then distally to the distal edge of the capsular rexus. And what you're doing, of course, is creating essentially a, a cross or an X which divides the nucleus into quadrants. When you make these grooves, be sure to carry the groove all the way across the central part of the X so that you don't leave a big mound of, of nuclear material right in the center. This makes cracking the, the nucleus more difficult. Now the cracking procedure. Put the instruments at the very bottom of the groove and lift up a little bit. And this creates a nice radial crack in the nucleus. So at the very bottom spread and lift. If you place the instruments too shallow, the crack will not occur. You'll tend to compress the bottom of the nucleus. Now you switch your device to FACO2, which has higher vacuum, higher flow. But one of the beauties of divide and conquer is that you don't have to use very high vacuums in order to bring the nucleus forward in most instances. And then you take each quadrant out, and you see you have very good st stability of the anterior chamber. And you can work in the iris plane. This is not only a very safe technique, but it's also one that's very kind to the corneal endothelium. Now at the uh, end of the case, as you start to emulsify the very last quadrant, I like to switch to FACO3. And in FACO3 is basically the epinucleus setting. But it's also a setting where there is less vacuum. There usually is good flow, but less vacuum. And things are just a little bit better controlled at the very end of the case. And this helps you to maintain the chamber at that time when you have very little protection of the posterior capsule.
Next, of course, you remove the cortex. I prefer a bimanual technique because it helps me to remove the subincisional cortex. So we have the irrigation on the left and aspiration on the right. These incisions can be made with an MVR blade so that they're very consistent, they absolutely don't leak, and it's a simple thing to put one extra side port in. These side ports, if they're well constructed, never leak. Then we switch hands, we irrigate now from the right and aspirate from the left. And you have excellent control and visualization of the anterior chamber using this bimanual technique. And as you see, the removal of subincisional cortex is really not an issue at all. You then can use your irrigation or aspiration to polish the posterior capsule.